Greetings and welcome to the 33rd episode of Retro Rant. It's time for yet another recent Amiga game, Power Glove Reloaded, released in 2018 by Lazy Cow, and it is an enhanced version of an earlier 664 game surprisingly named Power Glove. This is a run and gun in which you must explore 6 levels of increasing difficulty and collect 6 diamonds to save mankind once more. The graphics of Power Glove are adorable, without knocking your socks off. It is an enhancement of the original 8-bit visuals, and my opinion is that Lazy Cow did a very good job here. Everything is well defined, the use of color was very pleasing to the eye, and everything moves buttery smooth. There are also some very well implemented visual effects. The best part of Power Glove is the awesome music, sometimes upbeat to psych you up to save humanity, sometimes mysterious when you explore a dark tunnel, the music suits the game like a, a Power Glove. Amiga games quite often suffered from lack of simultaneous music and sound effects but I am very happy to say that Power Glove proves once more that Amiga is perfectly capable of that without breaking a sweat, if coded properly. Since I mentioned the sound effects, they are quite beefy and satisfying. The control system of Power Glove suffers from a tone of inertia. The developers have appropriately placed the setting in the North Pole and that is for the best, since Power Glove plays like an ice skating simulator. Jumping and falling to lower levels is also heavily affected by this inertia. This is not a deal breaker though, since the controls are very tight and you can become accustomed to the inertia with some practice. This seems like a very conscious choice from the developers, and my hat's off to them for taking the chance to go the wrong way, but I never feel fully in control of the hero and this is not a good thing in a run and gun game. I should also mention that console fanboys will also be happy here, since there is the option for using a separate button to jump so we are spared the constant second bat and nagging. The gameplay of Power Glove is a bit hit and miss. There are several enemy types with different behaviors that you need to learn and exploit their weaknesses so as to be able to survive. This makes for some very satisfying thinking of how to beat these bodies, as well as some precision moves you have to pull up to progress. Another thing that I loved were the badass bosses that you needed to defeat, each with his own set of moves, with a very fair difficulty level and a welcome gameplay change after all this exploration. And now on to the negative stuff. The worst thing about Power Glove is the backtracking. Everything looks the same in each level and the map doesn't help very much. There was a PDF with an actually usable map that came with the game, but I cannot have it handy every time, so it doesn't make much difference. There is an in-game map, but it doesn't tell you the exits out of each room, so it merely gives an outline of each level. All that would be forgivable if it wasn't for some hateful respawning idiots in each screen, that appear a nanosecond before you reach them, especially in horizontal screens. Combine this with your frustration and, admittedly, haste in trying to actually explore the level and the fact that you have a small energy bar and no lives, 
and this makes for a meh a gameplay experience. And again, all this could be forgiven if you could actually save the game after each level, so that Power Glove rewards you for being cautious and managing to escape the level with maximum health. But no, no saves, no passwords, so you have to do the thing again from the beginning with the same backtracking. And I thought that maybe with practice I could get used to it, but no, it doesn't get much better and you will still lose precious energy from these respawning morons. Some very poor design choices here by LazyCow, as this game can be enjoyed only with save states on an emulator, but it's a no-no on original hardware unless your name is Buddha. Health bonuses mercifully exist, but they are quite sparse, and when you play clever and save this for when you have lost a hit point, you end up wandering about the place and most probably losing more hit points because of respawning enemies. Some power-ups exist, but they are witty and sometimes their only use is to clear the way so as to get a health bonus, which is again self-defeating because of the backtracking involved. On the positive side, Power Glove saves the high scores, and I always love games that do so. It also allows you to play the C64 version, but with the Amiga music. I love this addition, and it offers replayability to the game, it even feels a bit weird playing the classic version with C64 graphics in my real Amiga. Overall, would I recommend Power Glove? Well, like Worthy that came at about the same time, we have two nice games with 8-bit aesthetics and modern sensibilities by very talented people. Unfortunately, they both suffer from poor game design choices and this restricts their rating to above average levels. Power Glove might be the better game out of the two, but not by much. Having said that, even though I might be a little bit harsh here, I think you should definitely support this talented team. Power Glove is enjoyable, polished and original and it is also dirt cheap to download, only 3 or 4 euros. Furthermore, it generously includes the C64 version playable from within the Amiga, so it is a no-brainer. So that's it for now, and I'll see you next time!